This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. This is the show where we celebrate 628 Tuesdays of professional wrestling chat with you guys. Uh, we have a hell of a crew with us, first of all, on the line from Poughkeepsie, New York. The only one that will answer my calls anymore. He is Mad Mike, the only Mayhemmer with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE. Still technically true. Yes. Yes. Technically true. And only a handful of people that we've had on the show with a future Endeavor letter. Although, that, I don't know, we're probably in the double digits for that. We've had yeah, I think so. We've had a few. And um, there's some that may get it down the line. Who there knows? You, go. you never know. You know. Things happen. Don't listen. Sometimes it's not good to buy somebody's fake hair off a WWE shop because that's maybe a bad omen. You know when you're like always worried about like getting the jersey of the guy that ends up like having a dog fighting ring or something later down the line, and you're like, well, I can't wear that jersey anymore. Now I can't wear my fake hair. You never know. Let's that's turn right. it into something else. Hey, we have other people here. First of all, with us uh, tonight is Hill Bradley is joining us in studio. Hello, Mr. Sorg. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> Anyone that calls me Mr. Sorg. Well, I, I just don't want to start off with, with like, hey, Hed, it's me. Bro. I don't want to play that kind of thing. No, you gotta just, work want... You're working way up to it, right? Right. Okay. Right. All right. All right. Now, we did have a cancellation. Uh, Matt Light is busy. Um, but uh, for good reason, for good reason, no ill will, all the fetch... <laughs> All, all the best to Matt Light in his future endeavors outside Mayhem Show. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We're going to see if we can get him rescheduled here in the near future. Uh, but anyways, uh, with us, we, I think we got another Matt. And he is the current Rise Wrestling Grand Champion. He's back! And without Marcus this time. Which means I can talk a little Yay! bit more. Yay! Matt Connor is here with us. The Reaper. Or, as we're, or if you put quotes, Reaper. The hypothetical, hypothetical reaper. reaper with us tonight. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I and and I asked you to prepare some jokes mm-hmm. since you were replacing uh, comedian Matt Light. Well, lucky for you guys, I put together a tight five. Fantastic. We'll check that tight out later in the show. Five. Tight five. Mm. But this is the Wrestling Man Show. Thank you everybody for joining us. And. Um, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, uh, where you can find links for the show. You can uh, um, get links to subscribe to the show and find the show on uh, any podcast uh, aggregator that you're using out, out there, any podcast app, any Stitcher or anything like that, and also video form, form on our YouTube and our Facebook pages. And uh, please like and, and, and share us and with anybody you think that likes this kind of conversation about professional wrestling. A big thanks to our friend Basic Sickness for the intro music. Although we might have a competitor for intro music after what happened here in the studio, uh, maybe we'll get that out there somewhere. Also, you can drive us an email at that that uh, email address. Good times. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or 412206WMS0. And you can tweet us at Mayhem Show. And please join the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. A lot of great discussion happening in there. A lot of people sharing. Uh, so we, there's been, you know, usually we're sharing a little bit around this Pittsburgh area. There's a lot of us from here. But I, I love that, like, Tina's sharing some stuff that's happened out on the West Coast. Um, Alex is in there uh, again. that. So we get, like, the different perspectives. So it's not this, like, Midwest, Northeast uh, perspective exclusively here. Uh, so we're getting a lot of really cool uh, discussion going on there. So thanks, everybody, that's participating in that. Also, you can catch us, um, if you don't catch us live every Tuesday nights or anywhere else and you don't like to hit a down bu- download button on something, you can check us out with our streaming partner, uh, the 405radio.com, uh, where we are streamed every night at 9 p.m. Pacific time or uh, midnight Eastern time. 
and uh, uh, you can you can you know fall asleep to the sweet sounds of the Mayhem Show. And of course, we are live here every Tuesday on Facebook Live, uh, every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. Starting to put some more content out there today, um, including we do have a submission from a Patreon supporter. Um, I got it in my email, and I'll see if there anybody else, anybody else has popped up there as well. Um, but uh, thank you to our, our our friends at the fan of the show one dollar level, Bo Diggity, <laughs> woo, uh, Ed Burke, Bobby F, J Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew, Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment, the Pod Club at the Pocky Club five dollar level. These guys and up got a special uh, lens from me today. A lens is kind of like an Instagram story, but only certain people get it on Patreon. Uh, but our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling, uh, Christopher Bishop, and hey, Bradley, who's here. Hello. Hey, thank you for contributing. Also, Doc Remedy and Dave Potter of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. And our friends at the Pizza Club $10 level, J.D. Jones and Billy Johnson. Just a quick shout out to Billy because I know he's uh, he's uh, uh, in the hospital and, and dealing with some medical things right now. So um, all of our best, the mayhem best, and, and uh, thoughts and prayers going out to you guys. Please uh, keep them in your thoughts and uh, send them. I've been sending them wrestling. Absolutely. I've been saying him wrestling to watch. So if you have anything, you know, any YouTube links or anything to check out, um, hit him up with that. I sent him. I sent him the most recent Rise show from Saturday night since he wasn't able to be there. Mm. Um, so I uh, hope you get better soon. And everybody, please uh, reach out to him, um, Billy J six four. If you want to hit him up, send over him inspirational videos of wrestlers coming back from injuries. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, send her that whole Triple H 2002 comeback video. Mm -hmm. That gets me hyped yeah. every time. Yeah, the, the Triple H one, uh, the time. Seth Rollins one recently. Just just give him a link to Finn Balor 24. Like, just all those things. Ooh. And while you're at it, throw in Tell Me a Lie. While you're at it. Yeah, yeah, that seems right. That seems right. But, uh, the producer, Missy, are you sending all those to him? <laughs> I just gotta look. She's on it. She's on it. She's on it. We'll She's get it. concentrating on we'll saving the videos of Billy. Give her a chance. You guys can support the show too at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. We got a lot of great stuff going on there. Uh Patreon Rumble. I think stuff just came through yesterday. Um so we'll be getting a Patreon Rumble out for this last poster here. And I'll have announcements soon about what we're doing about our next giveaway because I need to stop breaking the terms and services of Patreon. Uh, okay, anyways. And if there, you, you can never take away everything. from me. That I was the first. You were the first. Rumble r Patreon Rumble winner. With Simon Gotch. With Simon Gotch. He, he threw out The Undertaker. I think he did throw out The Undertaker. They I cannot, saw that. They cannot take that away from you, but they can easily replace you with Stevie Richards in the history books. Oh, man. Well, there's I'm, that. Womp womp. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not happy now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the biggest news from this week. Uh, please fill me in. Is have you been watching lately? I've not been watching. You have the not products. been watching. This is fantastic. <laughs> this is even better. Ronda Rousey oh, 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 has. Let's, let's, let's play two truths and a lie. <laughs> okay. Well, I already said Ronda Rousey, so I have to involve that. Bo, bo, bo. Okay. Um. Ronda Rousey mm -hmm. either had her first match on Raw, had her first match on SmackDown, or. Almost broke Alicia Fox's arm. What's the lie? <laughs> I mean, all of those are pretty, pretty reasonable. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with, uh, I'm gonna go with SmackDown. I feel like she'd be on Raw. That, that is correct. Yeah. That is correct. That's what I figured. And she did. I, I'm impressed he did that without a lifeline. Yeah. Very, very good, Matt. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, 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 so pretty good. So, the Alicia Fox stuff was kind of ugly. Uh, you, uh, terrifying. You, you, it just came back from injury. She just came back from injury. Got uh, pretty, pretty, pretty roughed up in the match. It looked like, um, but Ronda Rousey did did make a raw match. Yeah, all she three did. and a half minutes she of did. it. So a raw hashtag, match make. Hashtag women's revolution. Hashtag women's revolution. Well, it's a teaser, Mike, for the pay per view. I mean, yeah, maybe. sure it is. All right, oh, hold on, Sorg. Do you think that Alexa Blitz match is going longer than five minutes? Because I do not. Shenanigans. There will be shenanigans. How long did the match with Nia Jax go? The match with Nia Jax is different because it wasn't on a completely bloated SummerSlam card. 
SummerSlam has like 12 okay. matches. No, wait. No, I'm thinking the last one. The last show had like 13 matches. SummerSlam, um, it did. That, that on it. Extreme Rules had like 13 matches. Yeah. Because oh, they cut okay. a lot of them to like, they show up, someone hits someone in the nuts and bits a pin and, hey, I'm a new champion type that, of thing. That yeah. Nia Rousey match at least went 10 minutes. Uh-huh. At least 10 no way. That that wasn't that was a good match, I thought. Hold on, hold on. We got the internet, so we can Uh-oh. figure this out. We're talking about money in the bank, right? Yes. There yeah. were there were um ten matches on Extreme Rules. Alright. I'll, I'll I'll do this. You guys keep going. But anyways, uh Brad, Brad Bradley, mm-hmm. did you what did you think of Rousey's uh performance there Monday night? Um I thought that uh they didn't give her a chance to have a full match there was a lot of dancing around and uh it's it was disappointing and i'll i'll throw this in there this was a very rare uh, opportunity for me to show raw to my father so my father watched about 75 percent of raw with me Mm -hmm. and uh he kind of he doesn't take it too seriously he kind of just goes along with it because i go along with him when he's watching chicago cubs but uh, I was disappointed. You know, I'm not going to go too much outside of the subject. But the whole show, there were not many proper matches on Raw. Mm-hmm. It was too many. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what really confused the heck out of them was uh, Revival versus the B Team, and the incident that happened on that. That he was like, "What is happening?" When all of a sudden, <laughs> if you didn't, you didn't see. Mm-hmm. Um, all of a sudden, now the blue. Uh, the t- the peop- the partners at the corners were Bray Wyatt and Matt Con- uh, Matt Connor Matt <laughs> Matt, uh, Matt Hardy. I was on Raw <laughs> and Matt Hardy, like you know, the little <laughs> happened, right. and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they both appeared there. And my dad's like, "What? What is happening? I don't understand this." So, but to get back to the subject, I didn't think it showed what Ronda can do. I I because of WrestleMania you could see it uh, at uh, the other one you could see it. Well, let's let's look at it this way. There's nothing she has done on television that has not been extremely choreographed beforehand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she is not working the same way the other women are right now. No, they are going over everything with her over and over again before t- before those cameras roll. So you really, at this stage in the process, have to leave her very little room for error. So if, say, I didn't see it, but you said there was a lot of, like, circling around and, like, not really kind of time killers? Uh, yeah, the Alicia Fox kept on trying to roll out of the ring and trying to draw things out. It's, I'm sure it's just to hide whatever flaws are still there. Like, she is still miles away from where she needs to be in that position. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm I, sure I mean, of it. It's not like, like, Kurt Angle came in ready. Right. Yeah. Like, like, he also spent he, well, no, months Kurt down in Memphis. Ready. Kurt Angle trained. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt Angle. He was, was. He was at Ohio was, Valley for a while, right? He spent. Yeah, he was I OVW believe, for a couple months. I yeah. believe he spent time either OVW or down in the old USA Memphis territory for a while before they brought him on. Not to mention he went through the Funkin' Dojo. Mm-hmm. Like he had lots of ring time for them. She has had barely any. Measuring out her movie shooting schedule, whatever else she's doing. Like, she has not had the dedicated time to prepare for this like Angle did. Obviously, it's easy for her to adapt because she has the mixed martial arts background. But going out there like the rest of these women do night after night, being able to do it just on the fly, is just not in her wheelhouse. She, has, she's, she doesn't know how to read a crowd. She's still very wet behind the ears. So, this rolling in and out business, especially on a three hour show where she only has what hopefully was only a five minute segment. They want to do as little as possible to expose her. And I'm sure that's why the segment was uh, such a flop. How long was that match? Was it 10? Uh, no, the night, the, the Naya match. match was 11 minutes by the yeah. way. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. It, was, it was like 11, five. It, it sounds like, and also to, to, to back up the uh, current angle side of things, he spent time, uh, according to the Wikipedia page, uh, Funkin' jo- Dojo, as you mentioned, mm-hmm. um, also spent time in uh, developmental territory, the World Wrestling Alliance, um, 
Uh, let's see. This might have been just kind of going around doing shots. Pennsylvania Championship Wrestling, East Coast Wrestling Association, and um, true, 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 true. actually participated in a battle royal at the NWA 50th anniversary show. Oh, oh look at that. Mr. <laughs> Angle. There you, you go. Fam- but well, Tina is asking in the chat room. Uh, Kurt was, uh, yeah, Kurt was in the Memphis territory. So I, I, he did the rounds, I think. They just have a few notable there. Right. Uh, R- Rhonda was chaining as Santino Brothers down in SoCal area, she thinks. But, <laughs> but, but still, Are you like, trained? I think so. She's <laughs> never popped up at an indie show working. Not working, right? no. She's been at indie shows, famously. Wait, which, all, all form of which, AIW. Uh, clearly, and I get why she's not. She's Ronda Rousey. Right. Like, she's not going to go the way her friend Sheena did. Right. Like, she's, right, right, right. you know, if, if you're going to get that big money contract, clearly you're going to take it. Mm-hmm. But And to be fair, and this is part of the argument I've been having Mike with for Mike for a while, she does not need to, like, her, because of her status, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but she does. Uh, not for WWE to make money off of it, um, and that's what the point is. They're making money off of it. I, uh, they're making buzz. There's how how much how many of her shirts do you see in the crowd? Because I don't see a lot. Okay. Like she, she's getting one the, of the, the biggest pops the out there right point. now. She's getting the pops, and they get the uh, the media attention. So I mean, that all kind of comes around to tell, all the things. Tell me someone last night that you think got a bigger pop than Ronda. Um, Ruby Riot, returning. Uh, return pops Ooh. don't really. If someone comes up, Vendry, clearly you're happy to see them because they're and, back uh, from injury. Braun, and that Braun pop. Strowman flipping over the stage. Okay. I had a bigger pop. Like, well, that's also that's also an action pop. You see something. I'm talking about like just natural pop, like someone week to week coming out, and you're excited to see them. Mm-hmm. Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. Well, see, that's that's a fair example. I didn't see the pop he got, but I do believe yeah, you would. I, mean, I, I agree, it's a fair example. But still, she she's got one of the biggest pops last night, and also Eli- was showing up. El- Elias just... was fire. Oh last gosh, night. you're right. Elias I, is I, always fire. fire last oh, night. I believe that completely. It's a pop because it's essentially like a debut pop because she hasn't actually done anything on Raw. Yeah, uh, she. You're right about Raw, but she's done some pay-per-views. As, so far, this is- as far as right now, the sh- the newness is still very much on her, mm-hmm. and I, mean, uh, um, I feel I mean, she- I don't know. Find- she's she's had the same number of pay-per-view matches as the Undertaker. Well, they're they're also doing the smart thing, and but not she has- when they do show her, they're not overexposing her by putting her in the ring every week. Mm-hmm. Right, I think right. The smart thing would be. Because, see, the thing is, here's here's my big disconnect with it, my huge disconnect with it. When they when she first showed up, when Stephanie and Triple H said they signed her, the first thing they said was she does not have a Brock Lesnar contract. She will be getting no special privileges. Mm-hmm. She will be on Raw every week. I'm a WWE fan. I forget things after two or three weeks. That is well, true. But that's... That's my biggest problem. Because Man. if they just said that she has the Brock Lesnar contract, I wouldn't say boo about it. I'd still hate it. You know, you know it, I know she just came back from injury, but I feel like she has about as many matches on Raw this year as Alicia Fox and Natty. No, Alicia. No, and, and I, I would Roughly, think Natty has more not matches. Too, not too far off. Okay. Natty's had a few matches, but not a lot. Like when do you, do you remember do you remember the last Natty match on Raw? No, because she's no, on she's on SmackDown. SmackDown. No, Natty. No, mm-hmm. she's on. She's Nat, on. Did they trade her? She, yeah, she, they traded her. Oh well. Natty again, faced a, uh, Alexa, didn't she? Natty I think, faced I think Alexa. She might have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you're not seeing her every week like you are Sasha and Bailey or anything like that. No, or you're right. Or, or, or Alexa and um and and, and you know uh, she, she, Nia Jax, right? Her her role right now is to be around for the inevitable. Uh, turn against Ronda after she becomes champion for the yep. uh, main event for uh, Evolution or uh, Survivor City or something like They'll that. They'll need an experienced opponent to carry her through her first match once they mm-hmm. put that title on her. Be and that, in- that's Natalie. Yep. Be some interesting pairings. Well, there's some other things going on in wrestling. There are? There are. You, you know, WWE what? is not the only promotion around. What? Uh-huh. Oh. There's a much better one. Can we talk about Lucha? <laughs> 
just lucha in general lucha underground lucha underground uh lucha Lu mucha lucha the old cartoon i loved it oh the, the original ricochet yeah, i know <laughs> my my favorite joke my favorite joke from mucha lucha is when they told the flea about well some people have personal demons you mean the flea has his own personal demons <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what Matt is. Matt's my, my personal demon. That's that's what he is. Or is that, it your personal demon? Eric that Lewis? actually is probably a storyline Lucha Underground. That actually could be a hypothetical <laughs> personal demon. <laughs> yes, there are no hypotheticals in Lucha Underground. <laughs> like, if we talk about there, going down the rabbit hole, we go down the damn rabbit hole. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! Literally go down a fucking rabbit hole. We we talk about a lot about Lucha Underground on the Mayhem Underground. If you want our full dissection of the Lucha Underground and Mike saying that phrase that uh, Chris and Joseph likes, um, but uh, it, it, what did you want to talk about on Lucha this week? Oh, I just I just like talking Lucha more than <laughs> just in general. Hey, okay. Lucha's a thing, that's, and you should know about it. Uh, 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 yeah, like we're supposed to be getting more of the Rabbit Tribe tomorrow. I'm excited and scared because they terrify me now. Yeah, like, it got really creepy. <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty great. It's like if Johnny Depp did a bunch of meth and directed Alice in Wonderland himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like I, I also feel like a lot of this is from Paul London's mind, just in general. Oh, um, he, I would almost guarantee. Or he that. was the intrepid traveler for a good bit there, mm -hmm. and wore like an orange jumpsuit. I didn't know why. I don't know if he knew. That's true. But I think that's Paul to a T. I heard his seminar was great. Oh, it's great. I mean, I, I had a long conversation with him after mm -hmm. uh, resolution, after when he's in jumpsuit phase. The la I believe the last seminar I attended of his was six hours long, and two of those hours were just afterwards talking. Oh, jeez. Like, and I loved it. I didn't want that's it to great. end. That's great. That's amazing. I learned so much from that guy. That's good. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, big fan of Paul. Uh, but anyways, uh, anything else you wanted to really touch on from that? Oh no, it's just great. <laughs> if you're not if you're not watching Lucha Underground, like if you're tired of Raw and you're not excited for SummerSlam, just binge watch Lucha Underground. The first two seasons are on Netflix. Then spend your money, get season three out of iTunes. So many, con so many, so many. And and uh, Brandon in the chat room is saying All In is looking great. And that is, and that is one of the things I wanted to talk about, Mike. Thank you Ooh. for that transition. Wonderful. Ah, it's almost yeah. like you read the notes. So. I they didn't, yeah. though. First of all, I'm sad and a kind of so all in. I'm not gonna be able to watch live. Mm. We're involved. I am, I'm We're, going to figure it out. Gonna figure it out. I don't, I don't mean, care how. I'm figuring it out. What do you mean you're figuring it out? What do you have I to don't figure know out? I don't know what day of the week it is. It's Saturday, d d September first. Okay, that should work. Yeah, that should be fine. Uh, it's about a forty dollar pay per view on Fight TV. Yep, I'm okay with that. Okay, <laughs> you have a job now. You're good. Uh, well, uh, did you hear one of the matches? Uh, wait, 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 okay. wait. Uh, let's get okay. into the matches, but but um, well, I'm missing it because Chris Taylor and Rev Ron Hunt are having a cage match at RWA. Unfortunately, unfortunately, fortunately, but yeah, well, well, I mean it's going to be unfortunately for somebody in the end, but or, for someone, or, or yeah. they should call that the all out cage match. The all out cage match. Yeah, get it, get it, because you have to leave the cage. So we it's do all something. Out. The show's called aggression. So. Uh, hmm. Is we'll it see. ruthless or toothless or? Uh, okay, we're, go, we're going down a bad road here, guys. A bad. We got it. We got to We got to turn month around. To work on it. We got we, month to we, work on. We better on get it. all out of this road. I don't like the looks of these houses. Let's turn around. You've been to West Newton. I have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but anyways, so All In has some announcements. Again, Fight TV, they're going to be on there. Like I said, it's about a $40 pay-per-view. And you can actually, they have packages for like all of the star castings. And mm -hmm. I'm really excited after w listening to 83 weeks. I want to see Eric Bischoff having a conversation with the Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> <laughs> okay? <laughs> because like I didn't know that Conrad, I got the right one, mm -hmm. uh, is apparently a former Juggalo. Mm -hmm. And Eric was kind of like whatever they were on the show somebody set it up right. to like actually this is a because he's from detroit mm -hmm. he's from michigan yeah. and Sorg. remembers fago legitimately so i i but anyways so do you ever really stop being a juggalo uh some do some do unfortunately it's kind of i i don't know if that's true you know what it's like it's like lsd you just kind of relapse later in life but anyways i'm under the impression that once you're down with the clown you're down for life yo that's the way the song goes i've heard things you've heard you, things you, you, i've heard things like the great moinko album. It's, it's, like the great moinko 
<laughs> it's like being an indie wrestling fan. You put on a mask during the week. I put on a mask that I'm an accountant, mm-hmm. and I fool everybody into thinking I'm an office manager until the weekend comes, and now I can be myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's probably the same way with the Juggalos. Pretty much. Pretty much. I'm definitely not allowed to like wrestling at work. <laughs> we're not, we're well, part of it is there's really nobody at work that is interested. There's some that will fake like they're interested. I have one guy that every he thinks every event I go to is called WrestleMania. That that's nice. how bad it gets. Kind of like the half joke. You going to WrestleMania this weekend? Yeah, it's yeah. something like that. But there is a guy that uh, is on our Long Beach branch that is uh, a Raw fan, and I can impress him. Like, you, did you see Ellie Frost or was that what her name she used? Uh, I think it was J- Jane Frost. Jamie Frost. Jamie Frost. Do you yeah. see Jamie Frost? Yeah, yeah you, you, I know her. Mm-hmm. I've seen her wrestle. Mm-hmm. I saw her boyfriend wrestle. Mm-hmm. You know, have you seen Elias? Have you seen? And I, I've seen these guys. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, you have! And now you're important. Finally, watch indie wrestling become important in five years when the people you're watching make it. Mm-hmm. If you last that long. Yeah, yes. Some as of a, us don't wait, hold as, out that long. As a fan mm-hmm. or as a wrestler? Both. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, all out. Again, they're going to be on a pay-per-view. Yes. They're doing all this stuff. They're also going to have what I, it's called Zero All In Zero Hour. is going to be on WGN, which is a Chicago station that is on most cable systems. So uh, I, don't say, I don't think most. but Many? I don't, I don't think I get Many. Either. Many. Especially on the east side, I would yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Many. Man, right. I don't know. You got you have weird cable situations up there in the New York area. Like Yeah. Like it, your your cable situation when you were in New York City was like, really? You're in New York City. Why do I have more stuff than you? Yep. I never got ROH in New York City. Yeah, yeah, there was that too. At least I get L Ray now. So Yay. Like, Yay, Poughkeepsie. But uh so and, and what's the match you were talking about there, Mike? Uh so Sorg. Um <laughs> for those of you who know me. Uh, you know I'm a fan of the superhero genre. Mm-hmm. If, and uh, there is also a superhero who is a fan of the wrestling genre. And that would be our boy Stephen Amell who's fighting the fallen goddamn angel Christopher Daniels. Mm-hmm. Hot damn Alakazam, I am here for this. It's like the Green Arrow versus Bullseye. I'm excited. Do you know the background on this? No, I do not, and I do not give a rat's ass. I just want to see it. You really need to watch some back episodes of Being the Elite because apparently Ooh. Christopher Daniels um, tried k- killing Steve Amell. Really? Yes. That is... I, that's impossible. Have you seen that man on a salmon ladder? Okay. He did... Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure he's killable. That's all I'm saying. I'm pretty sure he's unkillable. Unkillable. He survived several island explosions on television, so I can only take it to be fact. Who was the actor that uh, Cody Rhodes was feuding with? That was Stephen Amell. Stephen Amell. Now he's. I like... thought it was the same guy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Same one. Yeah. So so does Stephen Amell just go around pissing off wrestlers? Uh yeah. Yes. Yeah, basically now. That is well, what he, he does. Isn't he essentially in the Bullet Club? Yeah, he's in the Bullet Club as well. So I'm Steve Amell. What? You're you're. Because I go around ah, pissing off wrestlers. How are you with the salmon ladder? The what? Exactly. You're not Stephen Amell. Boy. How are you at Art? <laughs> You've had salmon. You have had salmon. <laughs> yeah. That's close enough, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll we'll work on you. We'll work on you. Um, so, <laughs> anyways, uh, we got plenty more wrestling to talk about and some other alternatives to. I feel like we could do most of the show as alternatives to WWE at this point. Absolutely. Including uh, a great show that happened this past weekend. The one that did not include a bouncy house I'm going to talk about. We'll okay. talk about the bouncy house some other time. Very disappointed. At the, at the bouncy house? That uh, I was not at a show with a bouncy house. Yeah. You would not have found me for the main event. I would have been in the bouncy house. With my cloak on, just... <laughs> <laughs> you really have to preface that part? Oh, very much, because now it's in your head. Me yeah. just bouncing with my cloak, All just right. yeah. wafting yeah. in the wind. That Rob, makes it Rob Zombie kind of blasting out. as he's jumping up and down. <laughs> and that's how you get your return pop to Black Diamond. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Bring it around, bring it around. But anyways, Rise Wrestling, with a Y. Yes, with a Y. With a Y. It's important. 
Why? Was this past weekend? Of course, there was a big show. Uh, you, sir, defender. Let it go. Let it go. Oh, oh, oh. You know, Jim- that was your match. Very loud. Uh, you, of course, defended your title against Derek Direction. I did. That is now available up on the Vimeo on the VOD rent or purchase right now. It is. You should watch it. You can get it over there via IndieWrestling.us. It uh, was a very good match. Well, thank you, Bradley. It was an amazing match. Or should I say Stephen? Or Todd. Or Todd. Mm. No, that was. A, I thought it was a very good show overall. Yeah. I, uh, really, I was really happy with the, the show we put on. Uh, I watched most of it, most of it I could, and everybody from of the six man was great. Mm-hmm. Just the uh, man, the combination of not just uh, the main event, but Edric and Tyler and Gina. I just thought it was a really fun match. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Lawless is coming into his own as a heel. That that was a really good match between that him and really Lee. Good. Of course it is. Lee's just because those two have trained with each other for how long? Oh yeah, they I believe they started around the same time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Lee's like, and I've said it before, one big break away from just leaving the area. And that, that's that's the thing, Gavel. You know, you look at Gavel and you're just like, you 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 don't think. I'm gonna say you don't. I don't want to say you don't think he's gonna be a good wrestler, but you don't think he's gonna be that good of a wrestler. No, that he, he that he that he turns in in a matches like that. Like he, he you know he doesn't he doesn't look like like Lee. You know he, he just he looks like he he stepped out of a law office mm-hmm. as is his thing right. into a ring, and you're not expecting it. Then he turns in a match like that against Lee, and he's done this several times. Right, you know this is not like the abnormal thing, um, and it, it's it's incredible the the way that everybody stepped up in the last year over at Rise Wrestling, um, and I just posted so everything that we've done with Rise Wrestling since February is mm-hmm. now up on vod again awesome. uh right on vimeo we've of course had it on digital download before so it's a lot easier for you guys i know bradley i know you, you've been helping us uh, uh let us know what works on roku <laughs> 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 so um but no you can check out that a lot of other great wrestling uh from you guys at rise wrestling of course uh premier championship wrestling iwc international wrestling cartel renegade wrestling alliance as well as also on the vod we just put our documentaries up uh, the montreal theory as well as um the legend of virgil and his traveling merchandise table oh i've seen that you've seen that i I know you've seen that that. uh so a lot of great stuff going on there so what's better than wrestling how about free indie wrestling from indie wrestling.us if you join the mailing list uh you can get some free stuff over there and is there a short is this the link at the top of the page because i can't read this link what do I say <laughs> for the link? Is it just sign up to the mail, mail letter? Yeah, it's just sign up to the newsletter over at IndiaWrestling.us. You see a little pop up at the top, and you'll get a uh, second email here in a day and, uh, and with a free digital download um, as well. So thank you, everybody, for supporting Indie Wrestling over at IndieWrestling.us. And keep an eye over there. Uh, uh, we have a lot of great interviews. We just had Stan Styles who had his... Uh, intergender bonanza last friday we talked to him before that show and we do i hope that was a wrestling event that was a wrestling event okay actually. good i know it doesn't seem like it but especially even after you see the pictures of the event but anyways um that as well as upcoming interviews we have in the can with mt osha is before the bouncy house man i wish we could have talked about that uh, and also I had an interview with derek direction and uh dr uh dr dan um Dr. Dan. Love those guys. Yeah. This is a great crew out there. I mean, yeah, I I, I beat them, but <laughs> Spoiler uh, no, alert. no hard feelings. And taking out Gory? Taking out, yes. Taking on Gory next month. Oh, taking taking on in. I can see you already. I can already see what side you're on. Yes, I will be taking him out. Old friend. Mm-hmm. Old friend. Go check that out. That announcement video is also on the IndieWrestling.us YouTube and Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Are, are we also going to talk about the the weather, the patterns that happened as a repercussion of the slap that Bulk Nasty gave Sh- Sean Phoenix? <laughs> Man, I you look you look at Bulk and you, he's already an intimidating guy, but I saw a completely different side of that dude. Like a whole new level of monster mm-hmm. on Saturday, like he just ripped Phoenix apart. It was fantastic. I loved it, and Phoenix sold it like a million bucks, like he does. Just I don't know. I think there's a new gear that Bulk's finding. A new, like a new. 
I mean, it just bears repeating a new what a new level of monster, a new level of like brutality mm-hmm. that he hasn't found before. And I'm really excited to see if he keeps that going because man, that was just hard to watch. Yeah. Uh, from the chat room, um, one Ty, Ty Cross is very excited that you're watching the rest of the show. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, Getting his, 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 his shout out in the chat room. Uh, and also, Tina Keys. Uh, so we're getting NXT here in Pittsburgh. So if anybody's going there, I'm going to try to get tickets for it myself. Uh, it's a little easier to get NXT tickets than it used to be. That's for sure. Uh, so looking forward to that. You'll find me upstairs hanging out, grabbing a table. Um you know, I, just a side note, whenever this is the second time I've been on this show, and when I see Sorg, it's sort of like Mr. Wilson from Home Improvement, because all I see is these eyes that'll just kind of react to whatever he's saying, and well, he's looking like this, and oh, and I see him doing that and reacting. So the, I, I get that feeling from you. From these shows, oh, there's a monitor between us, is what we're getting at. I just took a picture of his a- my angle of him, so we can kind of give you the idea there. <laughs> so, <laughs> plus, I kind of hi- I kind of hide behind this windscreen too. So, anyways, we have well, first I want I want to talk in a in a moment about uh, 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 politics and other other alternatives to, to wrestling. But first, we promised something. Mm-hmm. I sent you a message. We put out to the Patreon today uh, our our Pocky Club uh, people out there uh, today to. Uh, hey, Matt Lay couldn't make it, so we thought Matt Connard I- as a replacement for Matt Lay. You got the jokes. I got all the jokes. And this one's from Occupy Pro Wrestling contributed. <clears throat> there were two brothers on a boat. Rinse and repeat. Don't judge them. Blame their parents. Who was left on the boat? I think you missed a part of the joke. That's not what she said. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh. Um, I, oh, repeat. Repeat. Rinse and repeat. Don't judge them. Blame their parents. Rinse fell off the boat. I did miss a part of the joke. Yep. <laughs> Who was left on the boat? Repeat. <laughs> Rinse fell off the boat. Who was left on the boat? <laughs> repeat. <laughs> I said Rinse fell off the boat. Who was left on the boat? Who's on first? <laughs> See. And scene. Yes. <laughs> we didn't say it'd be good ones. No. I've got like a, at least five knock-knock jokes I memorized because I uh, promised knock-knock jokes. Okay. Okay. We didn't promise this to be a good segment on the show. So. No. The, <laughs> no. <laughs> you're going to lose... Oh, we actually have like 18 right now. That's pretty good. Uh, wow. Jeez. <laughs> I was like five minutes ago, it was eight. Okay. They're, they're, they know what they came for. Well, let's see what happens to that number. <laughs> <clears throat> knock, knock. Who's there? Each. Each who? Gazuntite. I was going to say <laughs> bless you, but in this political climate, oof. Okay. No way. Okay. I'm no ready for the next one. Way. Okay. Knock right. knock. Who's there? Robin. Robin who? Robin you now hand over the money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Knock knock. Who, who's there? Voodoo. Voodoo who? Who do you think you are asking me so many questions? <laughs> Oh, 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 We've updated your title, um, oh, 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 oh. and we made sure to use the air qu- the quotes around comedian Matt Connor. So who is uh, Statler and who's Waldorf in this situation? Uh, geez. That's appropriate. <laughs> All right, last one. Knock, knock. Oh, God. Who's there? Dewey. Dewey who? Do we have to use a condom every time? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, All oh, right. Goodness. Tip your waitresses. Oh. oh. Oh, there is the thing you didn't think you were going to see tonight. On the uh, uh, yeah, yeah, end the show now. You got to end it on a high note. You got to end the show we now. We have so it's many over. more notes. All right, we all have right. so That's many fine. more notes. Oh god! All right, bring it back around here. I got to take a drink. Matt Light, so. if you're listening, I want notes. <laughs> Matt, 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 Matt should learn from you. I want Sorg, notes. hold oh on. I, I need to go grab um, uh, a needle and thread because my sides were splitting. From those jokes, I need to sew it back up. I think I'm onto something. My my, 
my knee is red from me slapping it so hard. <laughs> uh, Guys, I'm going to go to the New York Times right now. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to transition so hard. <laughs> well, that was a smooth transition. Yeah, that tra- was just so hard. Wrestling is in the New York Times, you guys, because Mark Cuban is uh, a rival from Japan, takes on pro wrestling establishment, of course. And I didn't think about it this way, but of course, New Japan Pro Wrestling is, of course, represented on uh, Access. AXS? Access? 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 I've been saying in Access. I don't know if that's appropriate. Uh, Japan has been part of the Access since the World War, hasn't they? I I don't think we make that joke anymore, do we? They're... That's that's what my dad taught me. Oh, okay. Anyways, hmm. but uh, but but I didn't think about it being a a Mark Cuban property, mm-hmm. right? And and maybe him being a little more hands on. Of course, the the last uh, American show that they had was was broadcast live on Access as well as over on the uh, New Japan World. So like there is that kind of push for that, and then things like Jim Ross being involved to kind of Americanize it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, you know, with Bull Club and everything, they're kind of riding along with that. And even uh, Mark, uh, Mark, Mark Cuban even has been quoted in here and saying New Japan is what wrestling is all about. He wrote in a recent email, fun, exciting, athletic, entertainment, and entertaining, and more. If anybody's going to get behind a product like this in America, I'd say that's a pretty good guy to do it. I mean, uh, right, right. Yeah. Wait, 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 what do you, what do you think? Wait, and this is the guy that did he, he, he brought back the Dallas Mavericks around. I think they were, they were a team that was that was struggling before he he purchased them. Um, I, I don't know if you have another kind of take on that. And also, by disclaimer, he's kind of a hometown boy here, uh, down the street in Scott Township. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know about Mark Cuban being involved in New Japan. Like, I don't think he's hands on necessarily. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, something about just him. I, I feel like New Japan is fine the way it is. Like unless he's like. Well, no, 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 no. It's not about changing it or anything. It's all about bringing it over here. Yeah, but to bring it over here, you have to inherently change the product a little bit. Mm-hmm. You have to make it digestible, and that's what they do it, at the show. Have yeah, you seen the it, Access it, show? I have not. No. Okay, that, I, I think you need context for that then, um, because. I mean, they're 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 turning it kind of into a package show, um, not not like Rig of Honor does, but they they are like putting it in hour segments, right? And I guess multiple hours sometimes too, don't they? Mm-hmm. Especially when they have like 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 there's like one part one, two, and three of of like what was this Secure Genesis I was watching on there, right? Right. Um, do you get access? Are you is that another one that you're left out on out there? Oh, I didn't even know it was on TV. I thought it was something you had to pay for. So uh, yeah, no, no yeah, it, it's a cable network. So, if it, are you a Comcast customer? <laughs> no, no, I have good cable. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, actually, I don't. I have time one. <laughs> okay, they might have it. You okay over there? <laughs> Sorry, the, the the delay on the video on the screen is just now catching up, and I'm watching my stupid little shimmy after those <laughs> jokes. <laughs> oh, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. There you go. You should have uh, done that Fozzie Bear. Ah! <laughs> I thought about doing the Waka Waka. Waka Waka. It's, I subconsciously did that uh, Charlie Murphy shake he did on the Chappelle show. He's that <laughs> the time-traveling pimp sketch. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Anyway, um, Access. New Japan. That's a very specific reference, but I got it, and I enjoyed it. So, so <laughs> Mike, Mike has – so, uh, Matt, you've seen, mm. you've seen the Access show, mm-hmm. and you've probably seen, like – the original product as well, yeah. right? For comparison, what do you think about how they're presenting that? I think they're doing a good job of trying to fit what an American audience is used to seeing without changing the product a whole lot. Cause you can't change it a great deal. Otherwise you just lose the whole thing that made it desirable to begin with. So I think they're also pre- still presenting in a sense that WWE isn't. That's the sport aspect of it. You're mm-hmm. still keeping the, the competitive real feel of the product in there, which I think ultimately no matter how you present it, as long as you keep that feel about it, people are going to keep gravitating to it as opposed to the latter. And I feel like that was originally the appeal of ring of honor, Mm -hmm. but ring of honor even doesn't execute it the way that new Japan does. No, not anymore. Yeah. Originally when it was still the punks, Joe Danielson, those guys, it was still very much that style, that athletic 
competition real feel to it but now i think especially since they've changed hands so much with sinclair and Mm -hmm. and, you know they've they've just went a different way with it which is fine but i think mark cuban i mean this is me just speaking out of school but i would think he's a smart businessman would see what makes that company popular to begin with Mm -hmm. and wouldn't want to toil with that too much no no he he, he's not you i don't think he's going to be hands-on with the product right he's hands-on or not even hands-on but he wants his comp the experts at access to be behind presenting that product here mm-hmm. right and it's just like and you know mike i don't know from your previous experience if you've seen any of the foreign versions of things like wwe like there yeah. is there is some conversion that happens there for certain markets and, and that's oh, no. what, that's oh, the no, way is. and that's i think that's all that's happening between new japan uh, coming to America by way of Access TV, right? The only thing I worry about is because Mark Cuban is a businessman. Mm-hmm. He's not a wrestling guy. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like there, he may try and monetize it too much. Like, like and, and try because if you, if my mom watches a shit ton of Shark Tank, so I know how Mark Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> I I would caution yeah. using Shark Tank as a as a no, as a look into no, how this no, dude no. really is. No, I no, I think it's exactly how he is, and that's the terrifying part. Like I I would just be concerned that he would have too much interest in monetizing the product and not in keeping the pro like keeping what's good about the product good about it. He mm-hmm. he kind of has to monetize it so it makes money, right? I mean that's the a lot of the point to a well, yeah. business enterprise, and, and I think he's he's got his own and, and you know he's monetizing by having it on access, right? It's content mm-hmm. for that. It, it makes sense for that. It brings people to that channel. That like again, how many people here knew access existed, Mike? You know, but I mean like selling more, selling more stuff to it, like uh, yeah, yeah. But I think it, it's also structured in a way where like it, you know, New Japan kind of doesn't hold all the cards for even the the selling, you know. Um, you know, something like things like Bullet Club and, and Hot Topic and things like that. Uh, it's just a method for that. And, and the thing is, and, and if you don't like, if you're the New Japan super fan, the cool thing is, if you don't like that presentation, you can still go to the source with uh, New Japan World. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but I think this <laughs> makes it, but that is a hard barrier for people being introduced to it. There are the more casual, really into wrestling fan. Mm-hmm. It, 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 you know, the bear with me on that distinction but that won't go and figure out a japanese website and what 9.99 yen is or be worried about that on the credit card you know um which honestly i i had new japan world for a little bit and it's not that hard to navigate not now it used to be real tough i i think i was i went into it like first few months it was out and as soon as i turned google translate on it was still a little bit like tiptoeing around but it was i mean i got there yeah, but that's a lot of people would just not even start with something like that. I well, think. I mean, you know, maybe you don't love wrestling that much. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. I, I would bet that a lot of WWE fans don't love wrestling that much. It's just, oh, it's here. Oh, let's go see the John Cena. Well, those same fans ha- canceled their subscription to WWE Network every month just to turn around and resubscribe. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun. Well, so they yeah. can catch WrestleMania, SummerSlam, and that's about it. Yeah, but you know, set on the rest of that material the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. You really, really love the sport, don't you? Mm-hmm. Real big mm-hmm. fans, aren't mm-hmm. you? Mm-hmm. Dude, I've been watching Saturday Night's main event from 1991. Yeah, yeah. Marcus is still on his WCW kick. Mm-hmm. So every time I go over to his house, he's got something on. I think he just went through the the hog uh, the hog wild that Bischoff and uh, Conrad just went through. I think I ordered that. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> oh, I ordered every one of those. <laughs> Boy, it's bad. It's, 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 it's the one hold. that was outside. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the main event was uh, Hogan and Giant. Yep. Mm-hmm. I ordered that. I remember ordering that. Yeah, it's not good. <clears throat> it's not <laughs> But at the time, and I was, I was much more of a mark. I was just, oh, it's WCW. And I didn't really grasp how bad it was it was just a wrestling oh I, that was like that's how the, what the wrestling fan it i was, was it was wrestling in front of bikers and my dad's a biker mm-hmm. and so it's just like like well this makes sense you know we're gonna watch this because it's just like because like he knows what that experience is like and there's wrestlers in front of it 
you know? and as a fan at the time, I was more like, I hope Hogan doesn't lose the, doesn't get the title. And I wasn't so much like, is this going to be a good match? Is this going to be a bad match? I was that kind of fan at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt Carlin saying he's been watching the early NWO episodes of Nitro on the network. Uh, I think I misspoke. I didn't mean Saturday Night's main event. Mm. I what is the WCW, WCW, WCW night? Yeah, WCW Saturday, Saturday Night. night. Oh, but the, the main event was their syndicated commentary, baby. Yeah, with the commentary, oh, baby. Yeah. You got the clubbering going on. Oh, that that's that. one of my favorite Dusties. The clubbering, Tony. The clubbering. Yes. Um, the safe him, baby. Also, Tina Keys yeah. uh, Access TV is just a vessel. New Japan with uh, former relationships with ROH and other wrestling companies keeps that presentation somewhat uh, and grabs that U.S. audience. So, I mean, there's there's multiple facets with it, of course. Oh yeah, their so, partnership with Ring of yeah. Honor helps tremendously as yeah, well. Yeah, that shows up on on over the air network TV at that point. Yeah, not so. only does it help with the presentation, but it helps talent wise because mm-hmm. they can use a lot of the same talent and interchange like that Madison square garden show they're doing next year. Like Mm -hmm. that would not be possible if it wasn't for that relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, on that note, we're going to go talk about this one story a little bit later, but in the meantime, want to give a shout out to our friends at slice on Broadway. I don't know if you guys had a chance to grab a slice on your way in here. Oh, that's right. We we had it last week at work. You did. We had slice. It was very good. Fantastic. They've been supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza for a good while now. I know there are people feeding for it on the West Coast, in the middle, down in Texas, building rings. Thank you so much. To, uh, everybody that's been talking about it on social media with us to let them know that, uh, that the Mayhem Nation is down with the Slice on Broadway. So they've been supporting us for a while right here up the street here in the neighborhood on Broadway, right up from the studio. And, of course, four locations. If you happen into town at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, over on the east end, as well as in Carnegie, PA, on the way out to the airport. So go check them out. PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. Tell them that the mayhem sent you. All right. And with that, we're going to come back with a big question. We're going to talk about politics. And I heard somebody's phone go, on, go off. Uh, and, and, and more. Who's got bad radio etiquette? After Who this. is it? After this message. I don't know who it is. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. To be fair, isn't everyone named Todd a heel? Just by the very nature of being In WCW, there was a guy named Todd Champion. He was a face. Todd Pettengill? Todd Pettengill was a heel. Hmm. Listen to his interviews again. He was a dick. Todd Grisham, also huge dick. Oh, boy. I'm guessing. I don't probably. Know. Back. I it mean, you're the, probably not wrong. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. That's how we come back now. Oh. Yes. Uh, we are here. Mad Mike, of course. Poo, 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 Kipsy, New York. Did, did, you, did you triple poo on that? I triple pooed on <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt Connard, oh, the pew, Reaper, pew, 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 the comedian. Pew. He does it all. He's the yeah. he's current Rise Grand Champion. Available for bar mitzvahs. Yes, go go watch it over at IndieWrestling.us. Mm. VOD, rent or own. There you go. Um, and also, Heel Todd. No! Has- damn it! Hashtag Heel Todd. Hashtag no. Heel Todd. Did, did, did he change the thing? No, I didn't. No, oh, good. good. Or at least he didn't do that. Heel Todd is here. Yes, not yet. <laughs> not yet. We can what do you mean yet? That's a way yet. to close the show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. See, now Archie's like back there going, Hey, I'll tie that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> what? Jeez. Oh, it is boy. time for our big question. And that question is, I didn't, I didn't come up with a big was, question yet. I have, right. a, I have a big question. You have a big question? Yeah. I, we were just talking about this the other day with some guys. Um it's obvious and not a secret to anyone. The Hall of Fame is basically a joke. Um, they let anybody in there. And suspends people from it, which is a weird concept. But then lets them come back even though mm-hmm. what they said didn't go away. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we have murderers in the Hall of Fame, racists, homophobes. It's just anyone can get in there. Yeah, yeah. It is a, uh, uh, just a, a collection of vile scum so and who, villainy. Who, who the dudes? Yes. No, no, ba- no matter what your contributions to the business are, if you're on TV for five minutes, they'll let you in. Cool. If we were to put a cap on that, okay, and you were only allowed to put 
someone in if you took someone out. Oh. Like if so you So let's let's replace Jimmy Snuka. If you replace Jimmy Snuka with let's just say the rock because he's not in yet. Mm-hmm. You want to induct the rock? Get Jimmy Snuka the fuck out of there. Mm-hmm. You want a Brit Undertaker in there? Fucking kick Greg Valentine well, out of listen, there. So when they create the Hall of Fame building, yes. Do you really think they're going to put Jimmy Snuka stuff in there? May Young. Mm. Yeah. May Young, maybe. Uh, Matt, they'll put Matt. Matt catch, catch me up, Matt. What did Greg Valentine do? He just sucks. I've heard that <sighs> he's he's just not a good person. And to be honest with you, I don't. I can't think of a single contribution that wor- that verifies him being in there. Um, his his dyed black hair when he was with Rid of Blues. Mm-hmm. I'll be. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna say I like the guy, but I'll be Devil's Advocate. Uh, U.S. champion, Intercontinental champion. W- how w- many WWE guys, tag yeah, team champion? How many guys can you say that about? Ezekiel Jackson was an Intercontinental champion. Should he go in? <laughs> okay. You see what I mean? Well, it, it, it meant more in his day, but I get your point. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I, I, I would also go further devil's advocate. If they did that, they'd be kicking a lot of pick up people out of As like they the should. NFL. Coco Beware should not be in the fucking Hall of Fame. Coco Beware should not be in the Hall of Fame. Coco Beware is not somebody that had. Tr- it, it, there wouldn't be this big space if you took Coco Beware out. Yeah, I would definitely agree this with that. Big bird-shaped space. Right. Um, Rest they, in peace, Frankie. Yes. Uh, somebody saying Coco Beware, but uh, but not Frankie the bird. No, Fra- Frankie. Frankie goes in the 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 pet's wing, mm-hmm. right with Matilda. I- I'll tell you who should be in, and I'm saying this just for R.C. Dupree. Ronnie Garvin should be in the. Hall I don't fame. agree. No, see, yeah, For, no. former NWA World Champion, one of the men that beat Ric Flair, R- right at the tail end when it didn't mean anything anymore. Hmm. And what did he do after that? He didn't do much after that, but before that, U.S. It's, Tag it's Team Champion, the, National Champion, we, t- wait, let's wait, put, not wait, in my hall. Wait, wait, we got, wait, we got, <laughs> we have Greg Valentine stories happening in the chat room right now. Oh boy, um, I started a fire. Vince, Vince uh, in here uh, says uh, Valentine looked right into my camera and said, "I hate you." Is that Napoli? Yes. Hi, Vince. I miss Vince a lot. Vince was one of my favorite people to hang out with at uh, indie shows. And also, uh, Nicholas, uh, Nicholas says Greg got uh, wine drunk in a dive bar and wheeling and cut a twenty-minute promo on Hogan. I mean, who hasn't yeah, done that? That's true. I mean, that's, that's that's fair. I did that before I came here. <laughs> that's this podcast, like every other week. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. that on uh, the on uh, Magnum CK's documentary that one of his friends? Yes, Justin Ewing, uh, yeah. who, who I also know and like very much. He tried to get an auto, well, like an autograph or something, and Valentine wanted to charge him like I. Th- this is me like forty dollars for an autograph or something, mm-hmm, and he's mm-hmm. like, I'm not paying that, and found. Valentine would not let go of the figure that he brought over to sign for him. Yeah. So he couldn't get away from Valentine. So Justin's trying to make all these excuses to get away from Greg. It's like, oh, I got to I gotta check my wife. You know, our finances are tight. And Greg's just like staring at this doll. <laughs> like, oh, he's such a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Tina says, I'll- take out Mula, put in Miss Elizabeth. I agree with that. Hmm? Um, if, if I had to take one out, to put one in. I, I'm taking Mike. as much of a sigh as Matt. Well, yeah, is oh, yeah, hold on, Matt, Mike. We got a backpedal here. There's a lot of sighing happening on the yeah. couch right now. I'm not saying she does not belong. Miss mm-hmm. Elizabeth is a very prominent figure in a certain era in wrestling. Mm-hmm. The means of her dying is a bit of a problem. Yeah, but the means of Mula living is even worse. Not arguing <laughs> with you. I agree with that. So, so are we are we rolling back? Then the Hall of Fame should be not just about your contribution. I I, I pretty much stay in the obvious. The, the Hall of Fame should not just be about your contributions in the ring and on television, but also your contributions in like in, your in person. Well, like, I mean, yeah, I feel like yeah, uh, I, I really respect. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I mean, you can have shitty people in the Hall of Fame, but you have to be honest about their shittiness. Yeah. Okay. Like I, I feel the same way about the baseball hall of fame. Like put Sammy Sosa in, put Pete Rose in, but say, Oh, these guys were cheaters and assholes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, I, I can see Matt's point with uh, Greg Valentine. Miss Elizabeth, she wasn't somebody that was a jerk. 
to people. She made no. some mistakes. No, absolutely. And you got a lot of wrestlers that have made some mistakes. Mm-hmm. I I don't see necessarily a problem with her going in because she overdosed, but there are mm-hmm. just I don't know. You just got to really I, I tiptoe not, around that particular situation. I would situation. not fault people for becoming addicts like that. No. Uh, because I think that's, you know, I, I, I it's a disease. If, if we did that, I don't know if anybody would be in the rock, I, I, rock know, and roll hall of fame. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, the 70s would not be in the hall of fame. What's that? Anyone from the 70s or the 80s would not be yeah, in the hall of fame. Yeah, there's a lot of cocaine back then, guys. Uh, <laughs> so so I, I don't think that's a disqualifier with Ms. Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, she didn't, like, do anything other than that. Like, I wouldn't mm-hmm. disqualify even China for the porn thing, right? That's especially giving WWE's history with Playboy, okay. right? Yep. Yeah. That should not even be a consideration. And she also had some issues. Look, I'm, I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. China should go in for her contributions to women's wrestling. Okay. And everything she did. The porn thing's not a problem for me. Um, but there are plenty of people that are in there now... Yeah. The, my, all right, I'm tiptoeing around it. I have a huge problem with Ultimate Warrior being in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. A huge yep. problem. Mm-hmm. They really whitewashed his history, didn't they? Completely. Oh, yeah. Like, the, mm-hmm. uh, aside from his history with the company and all the blackballing and mm-hmm. the holding up for money, all the, that the, shit. The, 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 the right. DVD where they, the they DVD let all that. Like, that oh, just, yeah, sorry about that, pal. That they just beat him over the head, the fucking shovel while they buried him. Mm-hmm. It's the simple fact he was an open homophobe. Mm-hmm. There are videos you can go online right now of him how saying can, gay doesn't make the world go or some shit. Yeah, how can you have him in the in, in the Hall of Fame and Darren Young sitting in the audience? Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't think I, he's in the know, audience anymore for one thing. Well, oh, yeah, he's at big time wrestling at the stadium. Uh, yeah. But still. Still. I, I hesitate to speak on the Warrior because the last time I did, the next day he died. So, well, he's already well, he's dead. Not he's coming not coming back. back. Papa Shango is not going to resurrect him or something. I'm going to be really sad if Warrior ends oh, up being Jesus, I, but okay. No, but I think I think it's one thing to induct him. It's quite another to re-celebrate him every year. Yeah. yeah. The Warrior Award, which... And, and that's going to be that, the kind of that's thing... That's entirely yeah, problematic. That's going to be the kind of thing that turns off the wrestling fan is when you repackage history that the, the regular wrestler fan knows is wrong and said Royal Warrior was a really inspirational person. Mm. And we're going to, here's this little kid that we're going to give him a, a Warrior Award. I wouldn't want a Warrior Award. That kid's going to get to be like, you know, 14 looking up Warrior and finding it and be like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And like the weird thing is, like when Warrior had his Hall of Fame speech, that wasn't even what he wanted the award to be about. He wanted the award to be about like long tenured employees in WWE who are uncelebrated, mm-hmm. like like the guys who do the music, the guys who do like long tenured cameramen, the guys who are security for twenty some odd years. What was like, the name? Da- Johnson, the guy that did like fifty Jim thousand. Jo- Jim, Jim Johnson. Johnson. There's a yeah. guy who should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and absolutely. I th- and I think he will be, to be quite honest. Now he's I hope so. I don't. I don't. I hope no, so. I don't. You don't? I don't, no. I don't think that'll ever happen. I think it will. They'll run out of people eventually. No, they'll never run out of people. Oh, they definitely will. As, we haven't even If they're grabbing the Coco Beware and they're going that low, they'll never run out of Yeah, but they started low. With Brooklyn that. Brawler that will early. be in there. That was early. Yeah, Coco was oh, a few it, years ago. Answer, mm-hmm. The big question. I'd switch the members of higher energy. Take- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was seriously, no lie. I was just watching high energy versus the Beverly brothers from world tour 1992. Cause they just put more Coliseum home videos up. You're welcome. Oh yes. gosh. The Beverly brothers. What happened to that? That I always thought that could have been a huge tag team. It was the mustache. Oh man. Stupid Anybody mustache. else you guys want to switch for the big question here? I was um, I was I wasn't prepared for a big question replacement. Did did you a replacement? Did you did you know one before me that I didn't know about? Um or or or, or I'm sorry, alternate big questions. Oh. 
Well, um, is Lawrence Taylor in the Hall of Fame? Yes. Wait, no. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, the, I'm confusing the, the refrigerator. Drew Carey put in Lawrence Wikipedia. <laughs> there you go. Drew, Drew Carey's take in the out Hall Drew of Fame. Carey Drew put Carey's in, in it. Carey. No, fuck that. Take out Donald Trump. Put in Lawrence Taylor. I have a great idea. Let's just close that whole stupid fucking celebrity wing altogether. Yes, yeah, and make no, it about the fucking business. No, I, How about that? Because a lot of celebrities have had really good contributions for WWE. Are, Name three that have shown up more than once. Dennis Rodman. One. Kevin Pete, Green. Pete Rose. Uh, yeah. Pete, they, Pete he Rose. showed up like twice. Okay. Pete Rose. Cindy Lauper. Cindy uh, Lauper definitely. Cindy Lauper definitely. Cindy yeah, Lauper definitely. Cindy Lauper should definitely be in there. Mr. T. Um, and I'll say Stephen Amell. So Mr. T just to piss uh, off. No, don't do that. Him. No. Yeah, if you him. put Mr. T in, you will wake up Roddy Piper. He will come out of there and well, say, Mr. screw this. Mr. 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 T's in. He's in. Mr. T's in there. You don't remember his whole speech about his mama? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but Mr. T's in there. He talked for, for, you know... I'm more than he, I'm, he was in the main event of the very first WrestleMania. I am more than willing to hurt Cindy Lauper's feelings just to close that whole fucking wing down. Cindy Lauper's not even in. Fuck is it. she? No, no, she's not. She's not. And, she and if be. I, when I close that wing, she I never will be. I think she's refused, though. I, if I she's smart, I, I she would. I thought I heard that somewhere. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. I see her true colors. Shining through. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a nice shutdown for that one. That's my closer. Want to give a shout out to our friends uh, that are uh, uh, now a part of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Uh, our good friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. Hey guys, pro wrestling is a wild and crazy art form, and Occupy Pro Wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun, featuring articles, blogs, and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans. Hopefully, some of their familiar to you guys on the Mayhem here very soon. Uh, but uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling is putting the smart back and smart mark. You can go check it out at Occupy prowrestling.com if you guys want to get your message out to our mayhem nation you can also hit us up hit up producer missy over at info at sorgatronmedia.com to find how you can be part of the mayhem show as well thank you occupy pro wrestling for supporting the show matt, matt would you say i'm a smart mark i don't know brother what's your iq I don't know. I, I've never really measured it. I'm just getting your opinion. If you think I'm a smart mark. Have we found a question? No, that was the question. That's the, the question. Is, the Hall of Fame oh, was the I question. Thought, uh, the question was, is Todd a smart mark? That no, could, me. Could, no, I don't know who Todd is. Is Heel Todd a smart mark? I'm not Heel Todd. Uh, I wish I brought mics. I brought, wish I brought my mics now. Mike's Lemonade? Mike's Hard Lemonade, yeah. They're not a sponsor. They should be, especially around the Christmas. I don't episode. care whether they're not a sponsor or not. I want some. No, I just wanted to, because the way that came out, it sounded very sponsory, and I just wanted to make make a distinction there. It oh. make a hey. specific distinction that nice, cold, refreshing Mike's Hard Lemonade is not a sponsor of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Do not go out and purchase cool, soothing, relaxing Mike's Hard Lemonade right, right now at a store near you. Well, I don't have to because I've got two. Boxes full of cans of delicious Mike's Hard Lemonade. So I I, I have it already. What is happening? Right smart now? man. Todd's what a smart man. There's also a beer distributor right up there. Up I am there. a smart Mark. I'm a Mark, and I just said something smart. I'm a smart Mark. <laughs> I'm satisfied now. Okay. Um. Hey Sorg. Huh. Sorg. Do you know who the rumored commentary team is for the May Young Classic? No, what is it? Please, please entice, in, entitle, entitle me. <laughs> and please yes. entitle me to know. That seems appropriate. Uh, Morrow and Beth Phoenix. Really? That's what I've heard. I dig it. I dig I, it. I really, really like it. Mm -hmm. I dig it. Because they don't have, that's the problem. That's the problem is with the women's announce team is, and we, we talked about this. I, I'm coming around to it after we discussed it. We don't have a Mara. We don't have a Michael Cole out of mm -hmm. there, the women's no, side of it. No, there's no play-by-play. -play yeah, when, yeah, they're, 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 yeah. That specifically. So, like, like you can put Renee on there, but at best she's color. Mm -hmm. At best she's color commentary. She's not play-by-play. She, but play. she can sound like she's excited about it. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what I'd like to hear. Well, Renee's openly admitted she does not like doing that, and she's not good at it. Like okay. she doesn't mm -hmm. enjoy doing commentary. Okay. So. Everyone who's complaining about they're not giving her a chance, I've heard she doesn't even want to do it. 
I don't care. Fit. If they pay her money, make her do it. Oof. Beth was really good on That's the mix management. Match. They're assertive heel talk. <laughs> right, Nick, Nicholas is saying that Beth did good on mix match challenge. Yeah, that was really good. Um, so you know, those are that works. Bob Parker. Mm. And plus, with Morrow, you'll have someone who actually probably knows the women. Right. Exactly. So uh, yeah, especially as deep as as you know, it's going to be with the women coming in. I'm not disappointed. I think they're all great competitors, but I was surprised with how many repeats we had from last year. Mm-hmm. I thought they were going to go in mostly a different direction with new women this year, but they've brought back quite a few. Mm-hmm. I think I think they're going to use it to sign some more of them. Well, yeah, because I mean, you can only bring so so many at a time in mm-hmm. NXT. You can only onboard so many into the system, right? Right. So I was like, okay, hey, you know, we're kind of full up. Come back around next year. Mm-hmm. Keep doing plus stuff. If, and if you, have, if you have people repeat, mm-hmm. then more of a story that you can build like it brings people back to the May Young Classic that may be attached to those people the first time instead of just being a new you know full blank slate um, they're probably filling in with people that have been signed to NXT they were still around and maybe you haven't seen them on NXT yet mm-hmm. they're yeah. in developmental you know maybe if you're going to armory shows in Florida you've been seeing a lot of these girls that yeah. you know uh, stuff like, like that can, girl, I know she's in the May Young Classic but she's been signed to NXT for a while now mm-hmm. so exactly so I mean I keep seeing like a couple of the the girls from um uh when I saw that Armory show back in uh what was that March uh you know they're still all over that stuff haven't seen them even in a driver match on on the show so hey guys um the devil's favorite demon is now uh Knox County's uh new mayor oh like full on now yeah so, so, well, so what, what area is re- the Reaper going to be mayor of? Great what was that, Matt, Mike? I I'm said, you know, Knox County politics. will have great dental now. That's true. I don't think I'd That's be a true. good mayor. Okay. Well, we, I really don't. Too much responsibility. And especially mayor of an entire county. That's that's weird. That's that's it's, it's so weird. That's Tennessee. That's how it like, works. I mean, no, it, that's that's spot on. This is a guy who's like electrocuted Shane McMahon's testicles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like let, let's think of the weirdest cane stuff we can think. This of. is a man who raped Lita. Yeah. Yep. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I could see the guy like when he's calling in somebody he has issues with. He he's he's at, in his office. He has the uh, recharger in his hand. He's like, I want to talk to you for a second. This is a man who hypothetically killed his parents in a fire. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a man who is tombstone someone in the presidential cabinet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 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 a, that's a real world thing that we live with right now. No, regardless, good for him. I mean, sure, he's he's a very intelligent guy. I'm glad he's putting it. The smarts a good use. Um, part of his uh, quotes in his winning um, the, in the article that I shared over there on the Wrestling Mayhem Show group, um, he was really adamant about trying to st- change a stigma around WWE talent uh, th- to do things like this. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, not the first. Of course, Linda was mentioned of, uh, as part of that as well. Right. Um, and and about Vince's encouragement that people do good outside of WWE because it reflects back on. WWE. Of course. So I believe Rhino ran for office in Detroit, didn't he? Yeah, yep. in the Detroit area, yeah. one of the counties up there. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was, I think, just started to be employed by them again. Mm-hmm. So maybe there's like a because I know like there's there's like these social media courses and stuff that they have out for for everybody now. Maybe there's a how to be how to run for office. How to be a course. politician. Course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how to be a politician like you, Tyler Breeze. Um, <laughs> you could be a. <laughs> City controller, I don't know, um, something like that. So, and that's what the controller. Yeah, exactly. No yeah, worse. Um, he won by a pretty large margin with uh, 65 percent uh, of the vote. Cool. So, they, so he, he's a nationally what? known person, and if the county's like a lot of counties, then the, the, a lot of people are going there. Who do I actually know of these three people? Oh, I know who Kane is. Mm-hmm. 
Dude, yeah, choose, was choose it just Kane. like opponent one, opponent two, and then the third box just said, it's got to be Kane! Something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, and he didn't really hide the fact that he was Kane. His, his Ooh, fundraisers no. involved mm -hmm. Daniel Bryan and The Undertaker and Big Show and, and things like that. Well, so I'm really pretty sure he had a debate with Jericho. <laughs> what, really? I'm pretty sure he did. Huh. Well, there's really no point in hiding it because no, no. even if he doesn't bring it up, his opponent will. Right. Like, you might as well just run headfirst into that and just beat him to the punch. Uh, Vince is saying Rhino would have been great for Dearborn being from Metro D uh, Detroit. He would have been a positive impact, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure he would. And he's a super, like, positive dude. No, Rhino's a nice yeah. guy. Yeah. So um, do we think this is the reason that King didn't wrestle with uh, Brian? In that tag title match, because it, because this is pretty close to that happening. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I'm just gonna say yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's a safe bet. Maybe something. Came wouldn't up. it be a? Wouldn't it be even crazier if he did wrestle and they won the tag team championships, and then he became mayor? <laughs> like, can he celebrate with the tag title? And Daniel Bryan says, we, we're we the mayor of Knoxville Town. We oh, are the mayor. We are, we're, we're the mayor. No, I'm the mayor. <laughs> oh, that's good. Fantastic. That Kane, good. Kane winning will do good things for the outside view of professional wrestling if he is successful. Do, do you, you think this bill should cross. be passed? Well, I'm not real sure. Dan yes! Yes! You know what? <laughs> Ty says that. Yes. Which, hello, Ty Cross. Um, Twice. But He's not the first wrestler to win a political office. Jesse Ventura did it a long time ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's nothing new. Nothing new. And Jesse went cray cray afterwards. Oh, Have you seen his yeah. show? <laughs> Jesse uh, went off the I'm rails. I would argue Jesse was crazy before. Yeah, that's I mean, true. I'm sure he was, but I'm just saying him getting elected governor of Minnesota didn't do anything for the view of professional wrestling. No. And we're even well, further no. along now to where the business is even more exposed yeah. than it was back Especially then. Since, since as governor, he was the special referee for a match at SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a very poor match. Yeah, yep. yeah, it was not great. Um, I, just, I don't think it'll change anything because I think also think the business is in a more positive light than it was back then as well. Right. Yeah, it's it's like saying Bill Bradley is really up the game of what basketball players can do when no one really cares. I don't understand that reference. Yeah, sports. He, Are you talking sports right now on this I was podcast? Sports, yes. Oh my god! No, no, no! If he haven't we been talking about sport this whole listen, time? Listen, if he hasn't wrestled in front of bikers as Sturgis, I don't give a crap about your sports ball players. Hey, I'm just trying to make an analogy. You may here. argue, I may still not give a crap about the ones that did wrestle. So, I don't like sports. I just want that to be known. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No fucks given. I, I, all these events I've been going to that wasn't sport. <sighs> someone will someone get Todd a tissue because i think he's about that, well, no wait 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 that those are sports yep. the, you well, know what bradley you know it, it's, it's okay leg wrestling is not a sport well actually no um, um, uh, I, i'm sitting here with the greatest leg wrestler i've ever seen in my life are you looking in a mirror bradley no look you're you're finishing move you do that leg thing there with the with the leg. What 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 are we what are we talking about, Solar? I don't know. I was just kind of seeing where where this goes. <laughs> I don't I don't think there's legs on this. We need to keep going. <laughs> Who? Marcus Mann just joined the show. Marcus. Hey, yes. Marcus. How are you doing? Show's been suffering without you. I'm so tired of talking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh jeez! Again, he can wrestle. He he can carry a wrestling company, but can he carry a podcast? We find out tonight on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Guys, I want to give a shout out. We're heading out here soon. Ooh! And uh, I just want to give a shout out to our friend uh, over at uh, the Thrifty Podcast, part of the network over here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I have the best copy for this from him. This is this is the thrift shopping podcast. A lot of stuff. There's a really what's that? that I know it's not from him. They're like things like that. that's why there's Whoa. random Ninja Turtles here. Actually, like a lot of the stuff behind you guys over there are thanks to the Thrifty Podcast, like Spider Man and Thor hanging out over yeah. there. Um, no, nothing behind Bradley. Notice there's no, no Batman, but that's fine. No, there is no Batman. There needs to be more Batman. There needs to be a lot more Batman. Yeah, I'm yeah. not happy about it. Mm -hmm. I'm since since Marcus is on, Matt, can you give me at least one? Eh, I don't get it. 
Oh, come on. No. Okay, Not your monkey. Oh, man. Not your dancing monkey. Uh, we already did just make him tell jokes. Just call me so. Todd again. Fine. All right, Todd. Mm. Calm down. Uh, Anyways, our friends at Thrifty. <laughs> I want to talk today... about sports. <laughs> 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 I like baseball. Uh, so today's a sentimental today's sen- sentimental attachment to things other people have forgotten and tossed aside might be uh, only be re- rivaled by Virgil's sentimental attachment to his former WWE career. Wow, that's a deep cut. Legend of Virgil in a merchandise table over at IndieWrestling.us, by the way. Um, can you guess which one of the great podcasts talking about the happiness of their... Uh, talking about the uh, happiness of their sentimental attachment brings, check out the Thrifty Podcast on the Sogatron Media Podcast Network over there. Uh, I believe it's Thrifty Podcast on the Facebook as well. Uh, good friend of the network. He, he's been on the show. Mm. He brought all of his bre- wrestling buddies. Ooh. He filled that couch with wrestle buddies. This couch that was couch full over of there wrestle buddies? was full of wrestle buddies. This couch has two wrestle buddies right now. <sighs> hey, that's your new podcast. <laughs> we're, we're not wrestle, but Bradley oh, and that's a new podcast. Bradley and Matt, we just renamed wrestle buddies. We just renamed Death with uh, Wrestling with Death. It's now Wrestle Buddies. Uh-huh. That'll be the relaunch. <laughs> <laughs> head, head to Mike. That's All funny. right. Uh, anyways, um, what did you guys learn from wrestling this week? And you guys in the chat room as well, of course. You want to go? You want to go ahead, Todd? Todd? Don't face bulk nasty in any way, shape, or form. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> I'm very good at comedy. That's what you learned from wrestling this week? I'm very good. What? what? Very good. I'm very mm. good at comedy. Man, Mike, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, I learned a lot from wrestling this week. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll sum. I, I learned just feel bad for Alicia Fox sometimes. Aww. Just feel no, because she's really good. Mm-hmm. She, doesn't, she doesn't get the credit she deserves. Like she gets the May Event Raw, but she doesn't come out to her own music. She gets to wrestle someone who's had less in ring time than like anyone else. And she almost gets killed. All right. Just Na- feel bad. Alicia name your f- name your favorite Alicia Fox match. Alicia Fox versus Molina. Come on, that is the greatest match of all time. That's such a we fuck, all know this. Such a stock answer. Such a stock answer. Did we just make that reference two weeks in a row? Yes. Mm, damn it. <laughs> damn it. I hurt. My hey, head. if WWE is pushing Alicia Fox, we're gonna make that reference. <laughs> Tina just learned that uh, she, she's uh, she's she needs to sell her firstborn for tickets for All In. <laughs> hey, to be fair, Tina, you could probably just lease your firstborn. There you go. Just rent them out <laughs> until until that the firstborn's like seventeen. You know, I think somebody just got in trouble with that for that for the UK. Uh, anyways, <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, uh, Matt learned that uh, that Matt Car- Carlin, sorry, uh, learned that the Cole versus own that Cole versus Ono, uh, chat moved, is a great NXT house show main event. He was at in Orlando mm. for the NXT house show this past weekend while he's down there on vacation. Alex Miller learned that if it's the final show, the Dome, and the final match, you're going to see some crazy shit. Uh, was the Bakerfield Coliseum, I think, or Bakerfield Dome, uh, as having the last uh, wrestling show there. Uh, we talked about it uh, a couple weeks ago, about what's going on there, I think, when Alex Cars was on. Uh, Alex Cars learned that he's officially headed to Pro Wrestling Gorillas Bola Night 1 Best of, Best of L.A.? Best of LA? Yes. Mm-hmm. I always see it as Bola, so I keep forgetting no, what Bat- it is. Battle of Los Angeles. Battle of Los Angeles. Battle of Los Angeles. Um, a night of, uh, he's going to night one this year, so good on nice. him. Um, Vince needs to get back out to some indie shows. It's been too long. Uh, yes, you. Yeah, Vince is exactly correct. He needs to sit next to me and watch Rise. There you go. Rise. Yeah, available on IndieWrestling.us. Uh, Tina also Please. is going to learn about the craziness of progress wrestling. I think she sh- shared some of that, that they're going to be up there in the Seattle era, area, I believe, uh, around her. Um, G- G- Dawn likes Black Diamond wrestling. My learned is in the show notes. Uh, Missy's learned is in the show notes. I get that. Very, very 
What? Very, very, very large. Nope. nope. Well, well nope. I'll, I also learned that takeover is going to be awesome. Yes. Marshall Gambino. I, <laughs> I need to plug for my last match. So Sorg owes me one for not attending uh, big time wrestling. Marshall Gambino is having his last match. I learned that Corey Future, or, yeah, Chess Flexor had blonde hair at some point. Oh my God, I saw that. I never at the beginning seen that. I never saw those before. Oh my, I, I saw that and was like, I, I couldn't tell who, which one was him in the in the beginning <laughs> of the uh, that clip. You figure it out quick. Oh yeah, eventually, because the, the same guy gets match, in each matches. And... The big match this weekend is Marshall Gambino and Chess Flexor. It's an end of an era in mm-hmm. indie wrestling in Pittsburgh. They're having a cage match. I, I've hear, heard things. You're going to want to watch this one. Um, and he's gonna be part I've, of- I've heard things, too. And uh, of the things that I've seen Flexer go through, if I can just name a couple, I've seen him in barbed wire. I've seen Raver set him on fire. Um, and Flexer tells me he's topping all of that. Wow. Wow. So I mean, it's going to be a good show regardless. So in other words, uh-huh. Chad's autographed checks flex or pizza may go up in value soon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's already up in value because it's flexor. It's right well, yeah, I mean, even more so. Um, yeah, it's a petrified uh, slice of pizza from the Super Indy where Larry Sweeney won Super Indy tournament to date that. Was that seven, six? Wow. Something like that. Yeah. It's a very old piece of pizza. It's a very old piece of pizza. If you want to see how pizza ages. Yeah. <laughs> I think he left it in his car for a while, and that's why it kind of became like solidified. It's petrified, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it is petrified. Go check out IWC Cage Fury, Marshall Gambino, Chess Flexor. I hear a few other guys are wrestling, too. Jack Pollock's wrestling. Oh, that guy. You, Jack, should, you Jack go watch it, Jack Pollock. Hi, Jack. Jack is Hi, Jack. one of the best in the area. He's facing Wardlow for the title in a cage. Wardlow, hot off of his uh, brief appearance in the Undercover Boss episode with Stephanie McMahon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. So, superstar. Yeah. Status there. Uh huh. Mm hmm. And, and one of Matt's favorite people, Jackson Argos, is on that show. I love RC. <laughs> I love RC so much. He's such a sweet kid. Good stuff. His uh, ladder match with Wardlow from Clearfield just went up free on IWC. I know. I've been meaning to watch it. Ever it since I heard about it, I wanted to watch worth it. Worth wild. So everyone okay. should go watch it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everyone they should, should go they should. watch it. They very much so. All right. And with that, very one, one check of the chat room. See if I missed any of you guys out there. And thank you, everybody that's been in the chat room. Thank you, Lisa Ty Cross. Three times tonight, get guy. Nicholas, um, Don, Alex Cars, other Alex, uh, Tina, and the crew. Everybody's popped in and out all night long. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Coming up on the show in the coming weeks, we do have scheduled Beast Man, also hot off of his recent um, photo shoot in Walmart. Uh, the make Beast sh- Man. Make sure you tape all your shit down. Mm-hmm. Fasten everything to the floor. Oh, yeah, yeah. And also putting a hole through the floor of a uh, gymnasium not too long ago. I would just double pad this place with bubble wrap. I'm just saying. Okay, okay. And maybe put some newspapers down. <laughs> <laughs> he is the beast some, man. Some litter. Yeah, some litter. Some, some litter. kibble. Okay. You know. <laughs> kibble. Also, uh, the week after that, Lady Frost and Victor Benjamin will be joining us. Mm. Um, hot off of their, uh, I believe, Florida and Texas tours. Mm-hmm. And back in town right before the Black Craft Wrestling. Yes, which I'm sure that's why Matt Light was going to be here to try to plug that. That was the attempt. Well, even though he's not here, I'll do it now. They, people should go out and watch that show because I have some friends that are going to be on that show, and I think it's going to be a great event. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And their titles look awesome. The, the main stuff. events on, on that show. The main event is the main on, events that on that show. I have a feeling there's a few Rise guys that will be on that show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's going to be a good night. Sean Phoenix is on that show, isn't he? Yep, I was trying to be vague about it, but yep, Sean's going to be <laughs> on that show. <laughs> well, I didn't. I, uh, I haven't I seen him advertised. No, I haven't seen him yeah. advertised. G Raver's on it. Yeah, Raver's on that. I think show. You're, are you confusing Gory with G Raver? It has been a while. We miss you, G Raver. He's been in the chat room. I know. 
Um, also, we have scheduled uh, shortly, I believe this is before or right after the second anniversary of Premier Championship Wrestling. He's going to be joining us on the 28th. Um, and I think we'll have something happening by then. Bradley, you've been seeing a little bit of the behind the scenes of what's going on. That On what? That thing I sent you today that, that we're not the, supposed to talk about. Did you get well, that thing I don't thing know what you're you? talking about. Oh, exactly. Thank you. You're doing your job. Also, on the 23rd, <laughs> the Brohemoth Super Smash Brothers Invitational is happening right here. And on Twitch, uh, the first, the first um, uh, participant... Honey Badger has been announced oh, oh my gosh. today. She's going to be a part of that. Uh, we have uh, at least two to three other confirmed. Brohemoth, of course, is going to be a part of the tournament. It's going to be an eight-person tournament. Bro- Brohemoth is everywhere. Brohemoth is everywhere. And you, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting Brohemoth. Why would you do that? Where are you finding it's a, a dead It's cat? a West Virginia thing. Oh, okay. And also, if you're here in the area, we are going to have watch parties for both NXT TakeOver Brooklyn and and SummerSlam. How about it? How about it? Mm. So join us here, hang out with us, watch some wrestling, because it's going to be four hours plus of wrestling. We need a friend. <laughs> we need a friend. So much. Right? <laughs> exactly. So much. And if anybody wants to take me up on it, uh, we're going to start uh, 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 WCW Nitro parties, just like the good old days. Marcus will be here every party. There you go. There you go. I if anybody you. knows... Where I can find a Nitro girl, because <laughs> I figured I figured that it would be cheap to get them to attend. Probably. Hmm? I hear a couple of them did all right, married into the business. So there you go. There I you don't go. think they're doing anything. No, not those ones. But, oh, but, I mean, not, <laughs> not everybody. <laughs> not everybody did well. Not those Nitro girls. Give me like the third wave of Nitro girls that you don't remember their names. Maybe they didn't give them a name. They're they're out there somewhere. So if 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 you go for any one of them that were in Ready to Rumble, the price is automatically going to skyrocket. Ah, that's right. Somebody did a Ready to Rumble reference at Black Diamond. It was probably uh, Andrew. I'll bet. Um, a- Andrew and uh, some other friends of mine got me to watch Ready to Rumble, and uh, and I yeah. Somebody just yelled, "I will!" I rule still you. I resent them for that. I will rule you and jumped off the rope. No, uh, uh, Derek did that in our match. I oh yeah! Did he? Mm-hmm. I know. I saw he it. Jumped s- off the apron. Somebody did it Sunday as well. Okay. Okay. No, no, okay. he did it off the apron, but somebody did the turnbuckle thing, like in the movie. Okay. That, that somebody definitely did that. It was definitely in a tag match. Hmm. I'll find it when I edit. Yeah, sure. it's somewhere. It's somewhere out it's there. Somewhere. <sighs> yes, producer Missy. There's something else that will happen the next month too. Which are you thinking? Yes, next month. Well, I was going to talk about that a little more closer to the event, but there's going to be a Guinness World Record attempt mm. at Black Diamond Wrestling. They're going to have multiple rings, 100 people in the Battle Royal. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a Battle Royal, not a Royal Rumble ty- 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 type of event. And that is going to be September 2nd. That one should be referred to as All Out. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's, that's, that one that's should a good be point. referred to as All Out. So if if a guy gets thrown out of one ring into another ring, is he eliminated? Uh, I think it's both feet on the floor. So I mean, okay, come on. that's that's fair. Yeah. Also, I don't know how big the locker room is at Black Diamond. It's not big. You're going to have a hundred people plus. They're doing like a champion showcase of some sort. I'm pretty certain it's going to be done in shifts. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't have a hundred people back there. They're just going to hang out. That's what the that's what the uh, tailgating is for. Yes, it's to, for everybody. It's that. for everyone to hang out. It's like, oh, yeah. number, but no, it's a battle 45. royal. So, so oh, that's they me. have everybody. They get ready in the parking lot. You go yeah, to the battle royal, but then you have to immediately leave the building afterwards. Yeah, and you're not fitting a hundred guys in the ring at once. So it's kind of what's well, at least two rings. I heard they're, four, but it, how are they fitting? They're four not fitting rings four in rings in the Where Black are Diamond. People going to be. Well, where do you, you put the people? <laughs> Where do you put them? <laughs> Where well, do the on. people you go? Rings, like literally right next to each other. So there's only like portions of the ring where you can actually eliminate someone. Right. If you throw one person from one ring into the other. Right. Oh, it's going to be a it, hot ticket. It, it's going to be a hundred Very person limited. reverse battle royal. It's a hundred person reverse battle oh, royal. Oh, no. We don't want to go TNA on that. Mm. All hundred wrestlers will be outside of the ring trying to get into the four rings. 
They have to each touch each turnbuckle in each of the four rings. The first person to win does that, he wins. <laughs> oh, boy. Back. Guys, this has been fun. Thank you, Producer Missy. Thank you, Matt Connard. The Reaper. The Rise Grand Champion. RiseWrestling.com for the next show. Take it on, Gory, next month. Yes, at Rise Wrestling. Go on see that social match. media things. There's an underscore. There's an underscore. Put that in there. Rise underscore wrestling. And, you know, other things. You want me to give one more knock-knock joke? Yeah. To close, us, to close us for the off? Road, for, for the road. For the road. No, 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 no. One I, more. Knock-knock. <clears throat> Who's there? Two. To who? Todd, it's to whom? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> that was, this is real. You would have thought I injected him with Loger, uh, Joker laughing gas or something. That was terrible. That was a great fucking sell. Oh. Heal Bradley. Bradley, Jesus. you're Heal Bradley on the Twitters, right? Yes, I am. Yes. I'm on Facebook. Well, Facebook is Bradley Ruthers, but uh, thank you for having me. Heal Todd. No Mad Mike 483 on the Twitter. The world. Hey, hey, Sorg. Hmm. Sorg. Knock, knock. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? Boo. Come on. Boo-hoo. Oh, Christ, Sorg. We're going to have another show next week. <laughs> hey! 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 And we'll have a Mayhem Underground later this week as well. Stay tuned for that. Uh, we tend to record that Thursday nights of some time. So keep it on the Facebook page for that for Wrestling Mayhem Show. And that's post, of course, uh, Friday morning Indie Mayhem Show popping up Thursday with Derek Direction. Mm. I, I, I have a quick enemy. secret. I have a quick secret how I was able to laugh so far. So hard at his jokes, I thought about taking Jackson Argo seriously. Oh, that's a good one. Thank you, everybody, in the chat good room. One. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.